Hey, hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, gonna jump right into it. Just a little repop video. Nothing serious going on out here today. And just a heads up, there's a horse fly in here. Don't know where the heck that thing came from. I mean, it came from outdoors, but I haven't seen it. It's not that warm outside. Haven't seen a lot of bugs. So if at some point the camera goes flying, that means I just got bit by a horse fly. This should be an adventure. I have a fly swatter next to me, ready to do some damage, but it's, it it's, appears to be too fast for my reflexes. Figured I'd film the process of repotting a Goriosum. It's not a great looking Goriosum. Came as a, I guess you could call it a rooted cutting a few months ago. And I have been in the process of trying to get this thing to take off before bumping it up into anything larger. It's in what is mostly all sphagum. I have worked some chunk into it over time just because I like for there to be some grit when getting things rooted up and to help get it ready for not being in sphagum anymore. As of about a week ago, it has started to fly. It just flew right past my leg. As of about a week ago, it has started to push with the roots and start to come upwards. So it's time to go ahead and get this thing out of this rubbery latex pot and into something longer that it can crawl in. This is, I don't actually remember getting this, but I've had it laying around out here for a while. So I figured to go ahead and use it. It's a self-watering container. I assume there's probably supposed to be string coming out of those two holes, but who knows? Cause wherever the directions are for this thing are long gone. I can add some string to it, not a big deal. I was thinking since this is going to want to creep and run that that's probably a good fit. That should get it through, I'd say from now until the fall time and be back and ready to repot it again, probably this time next year. If, I mean, maybe by the end of summer, who knows, but I would be pretty surprised. At the most beautiful of Goriosums, I've had it in my rooting area, which just means I have a spot on the floor over here with a heat mat that stays really toasty. It's out of direct flow from all the fans. The humidity stays a little bit higher over there. There's some air movement just to keep them from having really weak growth but it's not a spot that gets really great lighting, hence this leaf that just opened up here. And this did just open up, I wanna say maybe last night, could have been yesterday morning, but I'm pretty sure it was very recent. So it should start looking better over time. The other leaves that are on there, I'm probably going to cut off, at least one of them will, because it has spider mites on it. Which is another reason I'm on top of this and wanna get it repotted because I need to get it over onto the grow shelves where I have all those predator mites roaming around. What I have here, Pretty standard aeroid mix. It is more heavy on the soil than I would normally use for a philodendron. I have a whole bunch of planted aquarium gravel and sand that I pulled from a fish tank over here. It's just nice and nutrient dense. I am, I think I will add a good amount of bark chip to this though, just to get it draining better. A blend of small bark chips and some perlite and earthworm castings. Get a good amount of that in there. There's a little bit of coconut core in there as well. I think that should be good. Get some water poured in here. You're gonna need more than that. Get the mix hydrated if need be. I'll add some sphagum, but I don't see that being the case. There's already a little bit of sphagum moss in here, so I don't think I'll need it. I'm just eyeballing it. Wanna make sure that it is nice and chunky. This isn't quite as aeroidy as what often used for a Goriosum. That's because I don't really have the best of luck with Goriosums when I grow them in a standard aeroid mix. I don't know if it's because of the fluctuations between humidity and everything that goes on, depending on where my plants are, that move them around. Sometimes they're outside, sometimes they're inside, depends on the time of year. Whatever the case, this is going to hold on to just a little bit more moisture, but really, I, it looks really wet right now but because it, you just told me put water in there, it is wet. Main thing is that it drains freely. So this container here, I did just notice there's a sticker. It has a uh, diagram on it. You see where the wick sits down the reservoir, comes up one hole, runs across and goes back down. I don't really care about the self-watering aspect of this. Really, I just like the shape of the container. Get that off there so I can pull the reservoir off and throw a wicking cord in here. Self-watering is nifty, but since this is going to be outside for part of the year, it's not something I'm all that concerned about. In fact, I tend to get nervous sometimes with the self-watering containers with philodendrons at least, just because they are so prone to rot if they stay in moisture for too long. I say that as I use a 
basically a soil blend to plant this thing up in. Pull that through, doesn't need to be much cord on each end, just a little bit should be fine. And just cut that off, probably should have brought a blade out here with me. And then let's have a look at this. What I'm wondering with this is, is there an emergency backup? <laughs> like if there gets to be too much water in here when I have this outside, is there an overflow? Doesn't look like it. Nope, definitely not. That's that's a problem with self-watering containers. I always think it's a good idea to drill a backup hole inside of these things. This isn't going down as far as it was before. Is that because the cord's not lined up right? Oh, it's because I had it in the wrong direction. Didn't think that that would matter. Is that the reason? Yeah, okay. So at some point, not right now, because my drill is upstairs in the house, I'm going to pop a hole in here right around where this reservoir meets up with the uh, container part that will have the soil and the roots of the plant so that when I have this outside and it rains, it's not just going to fill up with water. Oh, wait, look at that. The blade's sitting right next to me. I can come in here and just score a line on here. This plastic does not feel all that tough. I should be able to get in here and just make a small hole, hopefully without cracking it, as long as I'm not pushing too hard. Yeah, it's hard to see. I'm going to go through and make a few of those little slivers around the edge, and then this should be good to go ahead and throw the plant into. There you go. That should be pretty good. I was, I was gonna clean the pot up for the video, get all the dirt and everything washed off of it, but I thought, why would, why? I'm about to fill it up with dirt. Soilless blend that is. I would say if you wanted a composition rate of the soil to aeroid mix that's in here, it's maybe 20% soil. If even there's not a lot in here. I mean, you still see it looks nice and chunky. It's dark, so it's of course going to look a lot more wet than it is. I have had better luck in the past growing Goriosums in a blend like this than I have just in the wood chunks. Roots are looking pretty good, kind of dried up in certain spots, but that's all right. I'm going to work out the moss that's in there so that it's not just sitting in a ball of dampness when I have even moisture around the plant. If some of the moss is left in there, it's all right. This has put out a good amount of roots in the small amount of time that I had it. There was barely anything in this container root-wise. It was just this cutting and one or two leaves. That was it. There we go. I'd say that's enough. The real question is going to be how well is it going to fit in here with this wonky turn that it has in here. I would like to have it pressed further down towards this end of the container, but I don't think that's going to happen. I don't want to center it either. That seems like a huge waste, but I guess as long as it still has, I'd say a third of the container to run through, then that's okay. So how much root is coming off of this main piece here? I could prep, you know what? I think I'm gonna do that. Looking at where the roots are coming out here, the majority of them are coming from along the new growth here, and there isn't a lot happening on the stem right here. Let's just come in and cut that off. Yeah, there's like three roots on there. Say for the longevity of being able to keep this, I think that makes a lot more sense to cut that off than to try and keep it in here and end up having the entire plant not have as much growing space left in the container, right? Here's the fun part, is trying to lift it up higher, slowly build the soil blend up around those roots without burying the crawly part of the stem. Have to have enough in there to make sure that it's stable, but not so much that it's going to be covered up completely. Very lightly tamp down the soil around the base of the plant. I'm thinking I might need to add some stakes to this. There's not a lot to secure it now that I cut off that big piece of stem that was on there. Give it a great big drink, work all the bubbles out of that blend, and be able to get a visual and make sure that that is draining quickly, which it is. Wow, that yeah, that's nice quick drainage. Hold on to that piece of stem, throw it back into the pot with that sphagnum moss that I took out of it. Probably throw a plastic bag on top of it, keep it nice and moist. Maybe it'll put out some more <laughs> growth. Oh, you can see those drainage slits that I put in there are doing a lot of good. I kind of wondered about that. They weren't quite big enough for the water to get out from. Now you can see what I was talking about, about wanting to have some holes put in there just as a backup. It's hard to water these things in. So I suppose I could have watered it in before I put it in the, that's fine, whatever. Clearly that's not acceptable. Ran upstairs, grabbed the drill, get a hole popped in there and this is done. Probably be doing this with the plant out of the container, but Oh well. There we go. Oh, do the trick. Nice little, not purge valve, whatever you'd want to call that. Nice little relief hole 
in there. And again, there isn't really anything left to do with this other than gather some steaks at some point. I don't really, I have some somewhere. I don't know where they are right now. And I popped another hole on the other side that's just a smidge lower than the one that's over here. So I got that one a little bit high. That should, I think, do the trick. As far as the plant itself is concerned, this is, it's a Goriosum, one of my favorites of the philodendrons. One that I have had issues growing. I know I mentioned this when I was talking about the soil blend when I have them just in basically bark chips and pumice and some charcoal and some sphagnum. I usually need something with a little bit more hold to it, which I would attribute that to mostly just being something about the climate. You don't wanna, what's the problem? Well, whatever the case, I did mention that the that this does have a couple of bad leaves on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those off, get them down nice and low. I know, painful, leaving it with just the one leaf on it, but it has some nice swelling down there on the tip of the stem, getting ready to move on and put out another one. And I did leave one leaf on here that looks okay. Not amazing, because it just opened and already managed to poke a hole in it. At this point in the game, I'm more focused on the plant being able to root out. That's why I wanted to do this now instead of when I move the plants outside, it's easier to get them rooted up into a container indoors, in my opinion. Outside, really the only difference is just the temperature fluctuations. So I'd have to wait until like June to even mess with it because we might still have some cool temperatures outside and wind. I think air movement around the plant is great for it as far as establishing nice strong roots, but I need it to put out some more roots first. So here are the old leaves which they don't look terrible, but you can see the spider mite damage that's on there. I'm just going to be throwing those away. They're out of here. And this is going to go over to the plant racks where all the predator mites are. And I have some predator mites to sprinkle on top of it, just in case there are some spider mites on it. If there aren't, there's some right here for it. The sooner I get that thrown away, the better and get it out of here. And I can't wait to see some growth on this plant. This is a philodendron large, round form, that's that's the type on it. As they mature, which it's not quite there yet, it's a glorious one that just has a more round leaf on it. It's more squat and chunky looking. I really, really like the way the leaves look on them, but it's a gloriosum, right? I think all the gloriosums look fantastic. The dark forms are really pretty because the veins stand out more on them. I had to choose between a dark form and one of the large round ones, and I, I had to go for the round. So those great big chunky leaves are so, so pretty. You can maybe look into one of the dark forms over the summer. Is that, was that fun? Just repotting a plant? My soil blend isn't anything crazy. It's basically an aeroid mix, bark chip, perlite, pumice, charcoal. There is a little bit of sphagnum in there, but not very much. They will rot if they have moisture sitting around their roots for too terribly long. There's some sand, some of that plant gravel that's mixed in there. It has lots of just old fish waste in it from the fish tank help keep a little microbiome of fun stuff going on down there around the roots of the plant i should be focusing either down here or up here but keeping the plant centered not working the camera's just like i don't i don't know what to focus on there's just a tiny stem there this soil blend is essentially the same blend that i used when i repotted my mcdowell a week or two ago when does this video come out? A couple weeks ago. And that McDowell, it's already starting to fill out. Like you can see it's firming up, taking in water and it's starting to put out a new leaf in just like a week and a half, two weeks since getting repotted. So it seems happy with it. There is less sphagnum in here than what I use with the McDowell. I talked in that video about how way back in the day, I'm talking for me, early 2000s, when I was a young teenager, I would see the Goriosums and McDowells around for like, 30 to 50 bucks, usually in a 10 inch pot, really big, big plants. It's amazing how times have changed as far as that's concerned. And they were normally just potted up in a potting soil, generally more perlite in it than what you'd have if you were picking out like a hibiscus or something else like that from the nursery. But still it was basically just potting soil. And there are problems with that, of course, since philodendrons rot out so quickly and they need a good amount of airflow around those roots, but it was never a problem because the general consensus was, hey, it's a philodendron, don't 
overwater it. Not saying that we should be planting these in potting mix. I think that this is a much, much, much better way to go about it as far as the longevity and ease of maintenance with the plant. I think going with an aeroid blend and just a little bit of potting mix mixed in there, which is the same difference as adding more coconut core or peat moss, whichever you prefer. It's the same difference. We're adding in some more sphagum, something to help hold on to some moisture. Basically the same difference. I just rarely feel like rehydrating bricks of peat and coconut when I have some cactus and palm blend sitting around me that has a lot of sand in it, has some bark in it. It's just, it's been working fine. Plants have been okay with it. And now that there aren't a couple wonky leaves hanging off of this thing, I might not need to put stakes on it. Although I probably should because I'm upping the airflow over here on these shelves. Plants will be moving outside in four to six weeks, probably four to seven weeks. So I need to get the air moving some more over here to get them ready to go outside where there's going to be wind. Which means I do, I have to poke around and find some sticks to put in here. If I can't find any, then I'll just make a grid across the top. That works really well too. It's real easy to do. And I think that this will be happy getting to go over and live on the plant shelves. Some more humidity over there and more predator mites, which I, clearly I think it's going to appreciate that. And I'm looking forward to watching this leaf open up over the next few days. It may not end up doing much because y'all saw what just happened to it. I combed all that stuff out of the roots. I don't think that there's much root damage. I was careful to not tear the roots up, but a few came out. The ones that came out looked dead, but yeah, not necessarily ideal. Okay, comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody what's going on in your gardens with your house plants, some of your favorite aeroid blends. I find it interesting what people have to do with their mixes based on where they live, where I am. I have to make a blend that's going to function well for me during the winter months indoors in my growth space where the humidity really is a roller coaster. And then outdoors where it sometimes will have possibly a couple of weeks of nonstop rain. So they have to drain really, really well, but also hold on to enough moisture to be able to come inside and have it so that I'm not having to water them constantly. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.